one? You're obviously confused and aroused. Listening to Slurmcast, a podcast for no reason. Today we'll be discussing season four, episode 15, or season five, episode 10 on Hulu, The Farnsworth Parabox. My name is Michelle Burlingame. With me are Tommy Roulette. How's it going? And Pete Woodward. <coughs> <laughs> Our guest today is Scott Lang. Hello. Welcome. I'm almost done with this goddamn Ugh. cold. Almost. Finish it already. I'm trying so Take a hard. goddamn airborne. I. I ate a Triscuit cracker late in the evening last night, and one little piece of delicious wheat flake got stuck in my lungs, and it started off a whole coughing thing for like 20 uh. minutes. It was the worst, but those spoke good at Triscuits. It sounds great. I'm going low-carb right now, though. Oh, <laughs> I'm, on, I'm, in, I'm in, the, in the last quarter of a sober January, and it is fucking brutal. <laughs> I'm reading a book about stopping smoking. You don't need to read a book about that. You just need to stop smoking. No, I know. <laughs> but it, it, it's just a, it, it's basically like the mentality of it. So, and it just helps you think about why you're quitting and not that you're quitting. I stopped when I would cough up blood consistently. Yeah, I'm not there and yet. A pretty, so. pretty, uh, pretty convincing reason. Um, there was a stretch there, you know, several years ago. Because I, I quit probably... 13 or 14 years ago, but... Um, regulars or menthol? Regulars. <laughs> right. Regulars. Uh, like a cowboy. Yeah. And... and oh, man, when I was... There was, okay, there was a period where I was filtered. like... <laughs> I was going overseas pretty regularly for, like, music stuff and whatever, and without fail, every time I went, I would get the worst, like, chest infection. And so I'd be staying in people's houses in the middle of the night and just like... <laughs> you know, like, hacking, hacking, hacking. And the, the rock bottom was having to go to a doctor's office in Belgium on a Sunday. When he wasn't open, somehow they, it was, you know, like whatever their version of an urgent care was or whatever, and this guy was just pissed. Because number one, it was Sunday and it was his day off. Number two, I was not Belgian. I was, in fact, American. Stupid American. Number three, it was a completely self-inflicted problem. He's like, if you weren't smoking these fucking death sticks, you wouldn't be sick with a translator here now. Like, I'm sure all the rude shit he said to my friend that took me there was not what made it into my ears. But just his whole manner was just like, here's some fucking steroids and get the fuck out, you shitty asshole American. <laughs> and, and when I got home from that trip, I was like, okay, this, this is probably it. And then I think about how much money I've saved since then. Because uh, I don't even understand how people can smoke anymore. That shit's expensive. It's expensive. My whole thing is the fact that they're just gross. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, it 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 just grosses me out. But it's, you know, you're not, you know the, the thing about gross stuff is a lot of times it's fun. You don't yeah, feel alive. It's really not fun. <laughs> alive with pleasure, it's not. Doing no, it not at all. <laughs> hard to hear that. They don't do anything. Speaking of gross stuff, except make your lungs bad um, and everything else. The jumbotron was like Mickey Mouse jumping into a suit of armor's butt. Did I interpret <laughs> that, was that so correctly? Weird. That's what I thought it was too. It was like a weird, tall, thin Mickey Mouse with like a. It was like armor. Who was into some weird steel yeah. ass play? It was not. I don't know. It was uh, the Queen is in the parlor. We've Again, we yeah, yeah, we yeah that was the one that just before. sounds dirty. Yeah. So I I think I think we're right and they're wrong. Obviously. Um, yeah, I I uh I liked this episode. It was um it was, you know, pretty crazy. And and even for the stuff that was like cartoony logic, like I, I just enjoyed it. Uh and, and I'm sorry to get ahead of it. What uh what exactly is your relationship with Futurama as a thing, Scott? Well, I I think the broader question and probably overarching problem with me, I'm not a huge uh I don't I'm I'm sort of on the record long term. Of I don't watch cartoons because I feel I feel silly doing it. Although I, I make a I make a giant exception for Rick and Morty. That definitely pulled me okay. into the cartoon world. Huge, huge, huge fan of that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, like I just watched Spirited Away with like my kids on a projector. Like okay. That was that was pretty fun. Uh, but by and large, uh, like since uh, I'm going to say the late '80s, early '90s, not I haven't really watched a ton of cartoons. Like I don't. I don't go 
I don't go deep tracking on it, but I do, I, you know, I, I appreciate the writing a lot. Like that. Yeah. Well, it, I mean, it, it, there's obviously different kinds of qualities to it. Like I would probably lump myself into that same kind of boat. Well, that's the thing. I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a Futurama expert at all. So I'm going to have to refer to you guys. Uh, I wrote down some things here. Uh, the creator, Matt Warning? Is he from <laughs> something else? Is this his first thing? I, you know, he hasn't really done anything else. He's got a new show coming out on Netflix. So. I, I, God love him, because this is... Uh, I've never heard of him before. Uh, think, not, not overly familiar, but... Uh, he, he might have had a long and storied career in pornography, but, you know, they try and keep that quiet. No, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's all well and good. And uh, I didn't... Uh, the one thing that popped out to me immediately, the writer for this episode, uh, Bill Odenkirk. Yes. The, uh, I mean, just a, a cursory uh, Google search, that will tell you that's that's Bob Odenkirk's brother. Mm -hmm. Well, and also, I mean, he was involved with The Simpsons. He was involved with... Um, I believe he was a writer on Mr. Show as well. Robert yeah, and so. William Odenkirk, I would uh, imagine. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't come across many Odenkirks. I mean, I imagine if you meet one in the wild, there's probably at least like two degrees of separation. You're back to the, the Bobs and the Bills. Also, when did this come out? Because I didn't know if this was before like Odenkirk's, you know, six, like Bob. Oh, Odenkirk's way, six. way, way before. This is probably concurrent with Mr. Show. So my thought immediately was like, I wonder if this is a Bob Odenkirk pseudonym that he was working under. Oh, no, 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 there's, there's two of them. Yeah, I, yeah. One's blonde and the other's not, which is <laughs> questionable enough in and of itself. One's blonde and the other's bald. Yes. <laughs> but back then, not, Bob not had hair in the early aughts. But, uh, I, you know, I've, I've, been, I've been a fan of Bob Odenkirk since the like early 90s. Sure. Um, going back to the Ben Stiller show. So he's always been involved in quality projects. I would even go so far as to say things like, let, uh, was it Let's Go to Prison? Mm -hmm. Or let's go to jail, which is prison. By all means, a pretty awful mm -hmm. movie. It's still got its redeeming qualities. I've never seen it. Don't go out of your way to do it. I think it's funny. I think it's yeah. Funny I mean, it's silly. It's <laughs> definitely silly. Um, but I, I, I think with a lot of the yeah. stuff that he ended up directing, um, it was the kind of thing where it's like, well, he knows how to direct, and he needs a paycheck. So good mm -hmm. luck. And then the mm -hmm. studio would be like, no, 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 this needs more boobs and a lot more swears. Well, I love silly stuff. I'm I'm really into the silly stuff, which actually um, over the this this past weekend, Scott and I both competed in the uh, lip sync battle. <laughs> How at many the wins Winchester. do you have? Uh, more than five, less than ten. <laughs> <laughs> it just every like every other month, there's a photo of you that services with hair that is clearly not your own. And uh, really, that yeah, frequently? You, I don't know. You came to, you came to play. And that's, uh, you know. Oh, well, that, yeah, for the lip sync battle, I had, um, well, I used I used an Elvira wig, and I did Amy Winehouse. I just, like, changed it up and put, like, a, a, like a cheetah print bandana <laughs> on my head. Oh, God. Uh, I also did a Lady Gaga, which nobody. Slayed. <sighs> nobody got a photo of it. Nobody yeah. got a photo of it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no photos, nothing. I, I haven't seen anything. Wait, wait, did you dress up in a meat dress? No. Oh. No. It, well, I mean, it was fake leather and a little bit of real leather. No. And a cloak. If you needed to show up dressed in sirloin, and that would have kind of <laughs> taken it over the top, I think. Uh, that would have been a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, the third song I did was from Earth Girls Are Easy, and I I don't know how many people actually got that Definitely or had one. heard the, it. The girl I was standing next to in the crowd, she elbowed me in the ribs. She's like, what, what fucking movie is this? <laughs> I was like, it's from Earth Girls Are Easy. Yeah. <laughs> Which I only was, did, I'm not to... Tip my tip my hand, but uh, I didn't know that either. I don't I don't know the last time I saw it, those girls were easy, mm -hmm. or if I remember anything from it. But well, it, there there is a song in it. <laughs> yes, there is something. Apparently, about it. yeah. I don't yeah. remember that. Yeah, so uh, Scott got second place. Absolutely, uh, I won. You, you did. <laughs> what, what did you win? Wow. I mean, win is probably a relative term, but what was your prize? My prize was a Winchester T-shirt, okay. two tickets to see Green Jelly. And fifty dollars at the bar. Uh, one of those things sounds like a punishment, not a prize. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'll let people judge on their own, but there's that's sort of like here's here's something sharp and rusty and dangerous. Well, I had a choice between green jelly or somebody else I'd never heard of, and I was like, well. All right. Before we clicked on the mic, she was singing "Little Pig, Little Pig." Little pig. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I loved the whole uh, intro sequence of the episode where the professor is just getting the shit beaten out of him by 
something, and all of his exclamations were just fantastic. With the the oh Lordy Lou, help yeah. like that. I, Buddha, just, Zeus, yeah. God, one of you guys, Satan, Satan you owe you me. Owe me. <laughs> <laughs> But then, not only that, everyone was just tuning it out. Like it's oh, it's mm-hmm. Tuesday. Yeah, it's just, just completely exactly. normal. Fry's just relentlessly asking Leela out, <laughs> like, right? Which still, I mean, I thought, I thought in the lead up to this episode that I mean, I had some real problems. Probably back at the beginning of the season, where it seemed like off character for him to be so into her. But I feel like throughout the course of the season, it actually sort of leveled off and became more normalized. So for him to be, again, just like begging, 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 and her to be like, mm-hmm. nah, just seemed like a weird about face again. Yeah. I, I think know. it's also because we're not watching them in the order they were broadcast, so maybe they're not all in the same... I don't know. Like, progression? I don't know. Never having seen it, no no spoilers, of course, but uh, <laughs> does, does she seems uninto him in this episode. Does she get more? Oh, it's not quite that cut and dried. It's much more nuanced. Sometimes she does. Sometimes she doesn't. Ain't that just like a lady? When Ain't time travel's like involved, <laughs> it's, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's complicated. Fair. Yes. Almost like it's a cartoon or something. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just. Plus, I didn't know how risky. It had been a, a while since I'd seen it. I, I, I didn't know how risque it was. I know it was on Fox, but I thought she said boob rash. Oh, <laughs> oh. Initially, no. she has sweaty boot rash. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, upon a second viewing, I was like, "Oh yeah, you dumbass." Did, no, so do you think that she really did have That's sweaty blah. boot rash? No, I think she was making it up because she didn't want to tell Fry no. Really? Yeah. I see, but Amy seemed to think that she did. I mean, she's like, "God, your feet stink." We all know it. Yeah, she's over here in the smell-free zone. Spla. Well, I think Amy probably always thinks that everyone stinks, and probably Fry stinks. I'm well. Fry, I'm sure stinks. Yeah, so Fry is at, at bare minimum. Fry is low level unwashed clothes. Bo. Mm-hmm. He had later in this episode. He had butter in his pocket. Yes. yes. <laughs> There's no reason. Another he one smell. Of, of my favorite. Fry what? Lines. What do you think Amy smells like? Amy. Mm. Hard. I. 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 Hard working yet pleasant. Because she's. She seems. Uh, like she does, she does stuff, right? She's she does not a, pamper herself. She, she does. She's super rich, and or her parents are super rich, and she's a like a graduate student under the professor. So she's really smart, but she's really yeah. ditzy. She's like capable and, of certain technical things, but she's very clumsy. Right. Yeah. She built. So she can build things. To me, it's yeah. It's, she seems like she'd smell like a low key like mechanic. Or, she, or like skateboards or party boards and stuff. Like, Something like that. Grease. She, she uh, under her fingernails, but perfume behind the ear i feel mm. like high-end perfume but with like solder yeah you like you know burnt metal there's something chemically there but yeah not not <laughs> oh, not that's not that's it she doesn't just smell like i mean that's i i think we i know i've talked about this with other people i can't remember if i talked about it on the show but like that's always been a fascination of mine is like what famous people smell like because you can see them and you can hear them and you can you can apply this to like cartoon characters as well. Did I already mention once how good Lita Ford smelled when I met her? Because no. that was the only thing I thought about when I met Lita Ford. I was like, oh my god, she smells amazing. And that's ex- <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> what I mean. I mean, what did what did sweaty horse riding Bill Shatner smell like? Because I'm sure that's that's. Uh, another see, that part. was a lot longer ago than I met Lita Ford. But, I don't remember. Probably like sweaty horse. Yeah, and like leather though, and not yeah. not unpleasant. But you know but what? I bet manly. William Shatner always smells like leather but it just depends on Rugged. like yeah. what type Yet of pungent. leather he is that day yeah like freshly tanned <laughs> or worn like i and that's like i don't know because you, you you don't get to experience like the olfactory thing and tasting people is certainly off limits but like frowned you know, upon at best yeah I, like <laughs> i imagine john ham smells really nice i'd mm-hmm. imagine so um but like uh you know Marilyn Manson could go either way. Depends. Got to catch him on the right day. Yeah, but but that's like I bet David David Bowie smelled really good. Now in the seventies, probably not so much. Well, Lilo, that's is that Peg Bundy? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah yep. it's oh, Katie yes. Segal. I, I find it hard to remove her voice from her from her face. So I always I see Peg Bundy when I see her when I see her when I hear her. So uh, I, I try I to sure. remove the face when I hear her singing, unfortunately, because I, I love everything about her except for her singing. And that's just... 
that's a personal preference. I don't think there's anything wrong with her singing. I think it's just not your very much not, your not bag. my not my bag, and it's just not your specific brand of grinding metal. No, it's <laughs> she's like a bar band blues singer, and she's competent. It's like not Bruce like Bruce Willis. Yeah, awesome. exactly like Bruce Willis. Exactly like that. I don't know if she plays the mouth harp. But uh, <laughs> like the Bacon Brothers? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. No, they're made out of ham. Um, <laughs> but not John Ham, who smells amazing. Exactly. <laughs> who who <And> allegedly <laughs> allegedly smells amazing. Better than Will Shatner off a, freshly off a horse, I'd imagine. Yeah. Well, that's a that's a different kind of amazing. Um, see, already off the rails. This oh, is, of course. Yeah, <laughs> but I think ta- I mean last week it was talking about space toilets. So talking about celebrity scents, I think that's a. That's a step up, right? At least a lateral move. <laughs> I so th- I like that the president, uh, president, the professor was like, "I need you to dispose of this crazy ass experiment that tried to kill me," <laughs> and uh, and that the only way to get rid of it is dropping it in the sun. Like it's just like this is this sun. is so dangerous that it it clearly beat the crap out of him unexplainably. <laughs> tells the story about one time he pounded a guy into the ground <laughs> like a, a shovel. Steak. I drove a guy into the ground like a stake with a shovel once. <laughs> what uh just no peeking. Um oh yeah, that the no peeking thing, that just immediately said uh, Ren and Stimpy to me with the red button that you're not supposed to push. Mm-hmm. The, yeah. the shiny candy like button, whatever you're not supposed to look at. That's the thing. That's the only thing. You well, want. the guy that Billy West that is voices like Fry the professor. and Professor Zo- and Zoidberg and, and Zoidberg. He's Stimpy. Yes. Son of I a thought, bitch. I, didn't, no I thought he was Ren too, wasn't he? He might be Ren too. I thought Billy West did all of the voices. He definitely did a lot. I don't know if he's Ren. He might be Ren. I know for sure he's Stimpy, because Stimpy is almost the same as Fry. Yeah. Yes. There's only three guys that do voices then. It's this West gentleman, Frank Oz, and uh, Tom Kenny. And oh, there's way more. Like it's, no, I well, think it's just the only three. You'd be surprised, Marie, uh, Maurice LaMarche. Maurice LaMarche, she's in a lot. Um, uh, Joe DiMaggio. Jo, 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 <laughs> Joe DiMaggio, you know. Yeah, John DiMaggio. He is Bender and also a shit ton of other characters and Jake, the dog in adventure time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, that fuck. That's where that's, that's where that, I mm-hmm. knew there was someone mm-hmm. that's still okay. That uh, makes a lot of sense. Billy West played both Ren and Stimpy. Although Ren was originally, um, John Crick Falusi who created the show. Yeah. So once he, once he that had the falling sense. out and left, then Billy West took over for Ren too. So, wow. He's both of them. Mm-hmm. So, he's like, I can, I can go idiot. No problem. I, the whole the whole run with Zoidberg on, in my experience, boxes are usually empty, <laughs> or maybe with a little cheese on top. One and time. one time pepperoni. What <laughs> a day that was! <sighs> oh, he's his bar is set so low. This was a pretty good Zoidberg episode, For and there sure. were there spoilers. There Multiple were two Zoidbergs. Zoidbergs. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was super interesting. I got Zoidberg questions. I kind of like the blue one better, but that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We'll get to that. We'll get to him. Yeah. I. Why does Hermes have to end up being the voice of reason in all of this? Where he he's was, the bureaucrat. Yeah, he's but, the only one that keeps people. Because it's a rule that you're not supposed to look at it, and he's just like, "That's the rule, yep. and you follow it." Yeah, that's that. Mm-hmm. What, when he when he, he, they hit Hermes' hand, and he said, "Oh, my collator." <laughs> my collator. <laughs> <laughs> that struck me as super funny. Yeah, it was. Great. You, I mean, what else are you going to use your thumb for? I, who knows? But. Is he always like that? Because then he he mm. he, sh- he he like fired the gun in the air to get everyone out of the room because to stop touching the box. Yeah, and then he handed the gun to Leela and says, "Here, use this to shoot them." She's like, "If, <laughs> if we look, if they look in the box, right?" He's like, Meh, "Whatever." <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, uh, I don't. Yeah, he's always kind of a dick, and he doesn't really care about the the crew most of the time. He cares about the rules. He's he's yeah. he is a level thirty six still bureaucrat, uh, maybe. Um, uh. you know, so he's. His job is rubber stamping and filing and denying and, you know, just making sure that people are adhering to the policies, however ridiculous those policies are. And he also seems to be like the accountant, too, to the Planet Express. Well, I'm sure he's just a general, like, administrator. Yeah. So, he's you know, it's a small enough group that, you know, you can't have a dedicated HR person for six people. Uh, and I imagine the turnover would be ridiculous anyway with the amount of crew members that have been killed over the years. That's true. 
but you know, you, you can't just hang your head on HR. You gotta be, you know, in billing and, and taking care of that sort of stuff. Somebody's got to sign the paychecks and the professor is clearly not <laughs> interested in anything to do with that. <laughs> now who, um, who rudimentary, more rudimentary questions. Uh, who built Bender? Uh, oh no! It's a. It, is it a? Is it a well, Pandora's box? In short version, the professor kind of designed him. Okay, but he was a product of the Mom Corporation. Because there's, there's a lot of there's a big corporation that like builds all, all robots. robots. There's like you know what's weird is like for the episode, there's only the main cast in the entire thing only doubled. Right. Yeah. So there's there wasn't you don't ancillary. ever see any of the outside actual universe of Futurama in this Correct. episode. And actually, the last episode, so the episode that's going to come out uh, tomorrow for us, last week or something for the people that are listening to this now, was actually all about going back to the robot factory and uh, dealing with stuff there. Yeah. So it, you just missed out. You would have gotten all that backstory and had a whole set of questions that was different than the ones you brought today. I am glad I got this one, though. This this It seems very... It, it's a lo- it's pretty Rick and morty E to me with the infinite universe uh, kind of being uh, thrown out there as a, as, a, as a possibility. They have so many different uh, universes, universes that mm-hmm. they got to play with. And, uh, no, I like... I asked about Bender because he seems to have... He seems technologically advanced even for the future that they're in which is what is it a thousand years or two thousand years it's, into the future it's, it's technically like three thousand three thousand three because he's but he still has very practical uh applications like he popped out his eyes and put in like periscope well eyes. that's yeah. what i was wondering about is he like he's never had like extra that. eyes before he usually adapts to whatever they need him to do that he can't some, be done by yeah, he's a like human. a moto he had like, like moto he can do he X. has Pop on accessories via cartoon logic that drives me fucking yeah, crazy. Yeah. Like that's that's my biggest. It, it we're this is our 69th ab- actual episode of this podcast, <laughs> and wait, this it, is the 69th episode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but well, it, that's 69. What I said. <laughs> there, it's actually. I mean, we've put out more episodes than that because some of them weren't actually about uh, shows. But this is the 69th episode of Futurama that we've covered on the podcast. Okay, and it wasn't until like episode 62 where I was just like. Okay, fuck it. I can deal with Bender's magical chest cavity. Like I've I've had a long standing beef with his sort of like ridiculous nature of like oh and he can do this and he can do that because his only job is supposed to be bending and somehow he just reduces everything into a bending. It, everything is a form of bending, and uh, I don't know. I, I can't bend my I can't bend my own head to, around that for a, man for a uh, self confessed non cartoon liker. I, I did I did enjoy that did part. We- you didn't have to invest in it. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> hey, did we pop- ever, or anybody ever bring up the fact that he is a bending unit, so therefore he bends space and time in his cavity? Oh, you, shit. You just did now, Tom. <laughs> okay. I, guess I think that, we solved it. Uh, maybe. I mean, like, well, we, I, I don't know. I thought it came up, or, or whatever. Well, that's it. We're done. <laughs> but that's really, no more podcasts. <laughs> so they, they sneak into the steam vent to steal the box, which... Again, Fry has the butter in his pocket for some reason. <laughs> it's hot. The butter in my pocket is melting. Has he had butter in his pocket before? Because I kind of feel like it's come I, up. I think so. I don't we, remember no, one when. Of, one of the guests here, I think it was Dan Miller, previous guest, was talking about it like at a wedding or something, and his buddy like came up and like said that to him. It was either him or John <laughs> Kay. Yeah. And it said that butter line. He's come up a lot today. Um, <laughs> the the pocket butter. Um, but then, like, I love the fact that they they steal the box, and it never occurs to them that it was just it was just too easy. No, right? Like, of course, our plan to work. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Fry is really excited about tangled Christmas lights. Like, out of everything that could be in that box. We can take turns untangling them, he says. Like shifts. A, like a cat. We can take shifts untangling them. And then Bender and is all excited. And it's closed, too, from being in the vent. Yeah, yeah. Bender, Bender says, hey, it's booze. Wide mouth bottles. Unlabeled <laughs> Unlabeled booze. Unlabeled booze. <laughs> I, so, j- just the fact that Leela tricked them with the fake box so easily mm-hmm. but with like those were the the two best things she possibly could have put in that <laughs> box to trick them with to occupy them and, and it was just such <laughs> like such a bare minimum ruse right like, <laughs> she just tricked them with, with literally barely any effort um 
But then, then at the end of the night, once they've been they've been uh, con. Apparently, also Bigfoot turned eighty. Yep, that was on the magazines. Yeah, Lila was that reading. That seems that seems really young for Bigfoot. Right. Maybe there's that has to be a reference to something else. I don't think so. I think it was just supposed to be like, you know, World Weekly News or whatever the equivalent is in that time. Yeah, she was. So Lila was staying up all night watching the box and getting coffee out of the machine, which said. <laughs> <laughs> new chunky chicken style yeah <laughs> uh and uh the coin that she puts into the thing had a had a three thousand on it that's what made me ask about the uh, it had a, it had a three thousand and a pig king yep for some reason <laughs> i didn't understand well, was, what that was supposed to be i just have pig with crown yeah question mark yeah <laughs> at some point in the show there's uh coolio is on a on a coin yeah i i yeah. think we've come across that one so I, I wrote down the chunky uh, chicken style coffee too. We all probably wrote. Yeah, that down. I mean she's outraged that she gave up the whole night without seeing what's in the box. Like all of a sudden she feels shorted about this. So I wonder if the box has, if it's if it's beyond just simple curiosity. If the box is exerting some sort of influence on people mm -hmm. to make them feel compelled to want to look at it. But the the other side of that is, like on the one hand you're like oh gross chunky chicken style coffee. But on the other hand, have you ever had like a coffee braised like pulled pork mm -hmm. or something? I mean, I think I think there's some potential there actually, where it's like if you if you don't think of it as a a delicious beverage to perk you up in the morning or throughout the course of the day until like nine o'clock at night, like I do, um, <laughs> you know, it could be a delicious kind of soup, a savory sort of treat full also, of chicken. Like, coffee could have changed over a thousand years, you know, like coffee beans might. You you guys get that new chicken chunky style frappuccino? <laughs> so tasty. I uh I you know, now that, talking about that coin with the pig king that we can't explain. I actually didn't realize until just now she flips it. This is foreshadowing for everything that's coming later in the yeah. episode. And it didn't even occur to me till right now. The importance of the coin looking flip at my notes. Can't be yeah. understated. I didn't even notice that. They base a lot of decisions about Leela does, Bender does. I know. So I'm sure there's apps for doing coin flips and stuff, but oh, it really hasn't hundreds. caught on. I have four different <laughs> ones. Like, so why, why hasn't that caught on? Flipping coins? No, 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 no. What? Fake flipping coins using <laughs> oh, apps or whatnot. I mean, I don't know. That's something satisfying about throwing a coin in the air. So there's something yeah. satisfying about throwing anything metal at something else. Or set a coin on your elbow and... Catch it in, in, in midair off your elbow. But it, what if you miss? Oh, Jesus Christ. What if you miss and it goes flying and you just hear that noise, that coin rolling, taunting you with the wherever it's that final destination is that you don't know? What if it goes down a, a vent? You'll never know how the coin slips. terrible. Out. I don't know. So she really, she just gives in and falls into the box. She peeks and... Well, it was she, deeper. She, she promised the coin. Deeper than a she small would be. box. Deeper than a small box should be. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> my, you'll hear from my lawyer about this. What did she say when yeah. she like fell through the box and like, ow? I, uh, I, I listened to this episode only on the way over. I just let, let it run on the Hulu app. And okay. the sound design on it's pretty cool. Like when she goes mm -hmm. into the box, she's like, oh, it's deeper than a rock server. And there's, there's lots of great sound design stuff. But, but so this is the thing, like... Go, actually, tagging back onto Bender's theoretically magical chest cavity, we've basically established at some point that the inside of Bender is effectively a parallel universe, like, multidimensional situation because he can stuff all kinds of shit into it. Yeah, he's like Mary Poppins' bag. Exactly, exactly. That's why I think it's magical, you see? That's my, that's perfect. Well, thank you for articulating that because mm -hmm. I've been waiting for 69 fucking episodes <laughs> for someone to bring that up. But... You, you know, bow, bow, bow. We should have that every time <laughs> somebody <laughs> says <laughs> 69. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, she basically she climbs into the box and it's it pops her out, literally pops her out into another parallel universe. I yes, I got your I got your bow, 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 bow. uh oh. <laughs> Chew muffin rabbit is 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 actually here. Ow, why isn't this working? There we go. Oh no, you broke hey. it. Oh, is it? Oh, oh, it's because it's, oh, it's, oh, it's, oh, it's, oh, it's not on. It's because it's not on. Beep, 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 beep. Episode 69. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I feel like we're in a parallel universe ourselves. Yeah. This is so weird. And speaking of which, uh, everybody's a different color, but the sky in, is it is it universe one? 
Yeah. Is that what yes. you Universe said? A and Universe, universe One. one. Okay. <laughs> the psychedelic guy is mongooses, the coolest. The fighting thing. mongooses. Yeah. That's a good name for <laughs> a team. <laughs> yeah. a good that name. was so fucking funny. Oh my god. The fighting mongooses. <laughs> I think at least one team at that Futurama trivia was probably named that. I think really? so. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, I just I love the fact that like Universe One Fry is theoretically as dumb as Universe A Fry, but in a in a he seems noticeably way more different together. way. Yeah, he's he's like he's not as slovenly. He's got a good woman behind him cleaning him up, picking <laughs> out his clothes. I assume, <laughs> but at this he's point. he's still True. pretty dumb. He, he, he thinks that the fake or Universe A Leela is a guy in a in a costume. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, shut sir. up, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, is it the professor that says, oh, I've been as dumb as Fry? Yeah. <laughs> and then he responds, I am not. I am not. <laughs> it's all, it's like, just, it was really rapid fire. But like, the fact that there's just like evil twins of everybody all of a sudden. And that's, that's where it starts getting weird. Like, I've, I've got just um, <laughs> all kinds of observations and questions about this stuff. Like. The, the somewhere that there's an e, there's an evil bender or there's a more evil bender than gold bender. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it, it's it's just it's a, that the whole parallel universe thing is it, it's just such an easy conceit. So for them to pull this off in such a relatively simple and good way, it it, it was nice. I it mean, didn't need too much explaining. Everything no. made sense. No, it was like that drug trip I saw in a movie when I was on that drug trip. <laughs> I mean, just everybody everybody kind of was the same but just different enough. And then the, then the they're professor. They're not evil, they're just jerks. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. exactly. In fact, what, what, what's, uh, was, oh, God, it's, it's farther up. I'll wait. The the Leela's when they had to when they had to fight each other. I know I know their moves, and then it was perfectly symmetrical violence. <laughs> it perfectly never solved anything. Perfectly symmetrical violence never solved anything. Boulder crap, but the blue Zoidberg. It was mm-hmm. so so much less result revolting than red Zoidberg for some reason. I don't know why. I think maybe because red just makes you feel like uh, inflamed and infected. Well, like universe A Zoidberg is even. Like, well, Universe One Zoidberg kind of like pushes around Universe A Zoidberg, like our Zoidberg that we're used to. It, like he's so weak that he even lets another one of himself <laughs> push him around. Oh, yeah, he yeah, gets yeah. subjugated. Well, by it was yeah. no look. It wasn't him. It was the box. The box was no. telling him what to do. <laughs> the but box says no. You and your you and your slight difference disgust me. <laughs> um, uh, the thing I couldn't figure out though is Universe One Amy looked like she was Puerto Rican. As opposed to Chinese, like I was trying to figure uh, out the color scheme part. I I think it was the hair, the color of the hair just threw everything off. Yeah, her yeah. skin was a little darker, her hair was lighter. It wasn't black; it was like a medium brown. Yeah, it, and I, she was in yellow. Yeah, I guarantee you, they did not redraw her; they just redid the colors. No, well, yeah, right. But yeah. I mean, just as far as like, if, as far if she was just a different nationality, because she's mm-hmm. well, she's Martian, but would she still be Amy Wong? I mean, she could be. Yeah, no, Amy. she would be Amy Wong because they're exactly the same. Okay, so it's just it was weird because the the coloration made her ethnicity look completely different. And Hermes, uh, Hermes one had blonde hair. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like Cisco. Yeah, yeah. And and that was, was also ju- odd. Just like as it, troubling. Black haired Fry was still Fry. Goldbender still Bender, and you know, red haired Leela was still. Leela, yeah, but kept... like, oh, and Professor, the only difference was that weird scar on his head, and that, <laughs> well, their, that their shirts was were so like, funny yeah, their shirts were the like y. slightly different blue greens. <laughs> I, 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 like but, with that joke, I still to this day I don't know if I get it. Which one? The like, brain joke? Yeah, the brain joke. The the the. Hang on, I don't I don't want to getting the it. brain out was the easy part. The hard, hard part, part was getting the brain out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, just because <laughs> there's no joke. He he didn't succeed. Okay. <laughs> He's okay, just, he's demented. That's what I thought, but then I was like, "What if there was like some underlining joke in there that I just wasn't getting?" There is a joke that I don't get coming up at some point. Well, like, uh, or maybe we passed it. I, I like that sure. we find out Bender is fog hat gray yeah. specifically. <laughs> I I can't stay mad at what is essentially me. Yep. 
Uh, the Elzar's is still the fancy restaurant, though. I wish yeah. they had shown Elzar because I wonder what parallel universe Elzar would look like. But the sign out front with "Try the Mountain of Goulash, All You Can Climb," <laughs> which I I'd, I'd probably accept a challenge like that. Like, you know, like at the uh, at the beginning of Iron Chef. When it's like, here is the layout, here's the secret ingredient, and there's just like a mountain of the food. Like, if it was the right ingredient, I would just go to town on that. I just, I'd just, love to just sort of experience that. Like a McDonald's Playland ball pit, but full of, like, cheeseburgers or something. I would <laughs> like that, full of cheeseburgers. Yeah. As long as they were wrapped and I could unwrap <laughs> yeah. them. And they weren't from McDonald's. And no one else was in there? <laughs> yeah. I'll say, maybe my own personal phone booth. Like, yeah. Full of cheeseburgers, but uh, I don't want other people's feet. Yeah, I don't want it to be like a public thing that anyone can go in. I'd suit up in get. like a scuba suit, even like I'd, <laughs> I'd put on a prophylactic device. You got to put on like, a body to, condom to just kind of like to. Oh, how nice would it be to roll around in a giant pit full of wrapped warm cheeseburgers? I think it's warmer than <laughs> you think. I yeah, bet, probably, yeah. Yeah. but it would be squishy and delightful. It I mean, would smell really good. What's, what's the <laughs> internal temperature of like a medium well burger? Like 140, 150, something. But it like comes that. off the grill. I'm talking about it's been in the wrapper, it's sat in your car for the drive home, like that okay. temperature. But so even like, those concessions, I would also enjoy climbing through the Like mountain. room temperature <laughs> plus five. <laughs> 85 degree cheeseburger. Yeah. Tops. Yeah, or in this case, I mean, it's sixty-seven in here, so like a seventy-two degree. You do you keep it dead. you keep it chill in here. That's nice. That's well, I just got my gas bill, man. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's been a cold. It's been a fucking cold. Yes, yeah, it has. yeah. Oh my so God. I mean, it I, was balmy yesterday, and that's because we're used to negative nine. I guess the the, the uh, you know the big reveal is that in Universe One, Fry and Leela are married mm-hmm. happily, apparently, all as a result of a you know an ill-fated coin toss. Mm-hmm. But that her she got a diamond scrunchie <laughs> at a Neil Diamond concert. Yeah, she was no, uh, was no, the, no, no, was no, 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 no. She got a diamond scrunchie, and then are scrunchies still a thing? Yeah, apparently, really. Yeah, yep. were they not for a while? I, I wear them. They all were the time. definitely, <laughs> they were definitely big in the the eighties and nineties. Well, yeah, but, I was alive then. <laughs> yeah, but then they kind of like fell out of style okay. for a while, and. Now the 90s are back, so yeah, had, scrunchies are back. I had girls all through the 2000s. I never saw a scrunchie on any of them. It was hair ties only. Yeah. They must be back now, though. Yeah, I don't know anybody that wears a scrunchie, mm-hmm. let alone a diamond scrunchie. No. Mm-hmm. She was wearing it in, when they went to dinner, too. She was, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I wonder if that was like her wedding ring, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She just yeah. wore that as her sign, because Fry didn't have a ring on or anything, and neither did she. Mm-hmm. But, but the fact that Universe... It's, it's just like I got beat up once in a Neil Diamond concert by a guy named Scrunchy. <laughs> like and that's super topical. Neil Diamond yeah. just retired. Yeah. Right. Well, because he, he has Parkinson's. Yeah, that's not, why it's so cool. sad. Well, I, I mean, I don't want to question his diagnosis or anything. I just wonder, like, how heavy his touring schedule was now. Bup, bup. He was about to go to like Australia. And yeah, New he Zealand canceled. And stuff. He canceled all of his Australia New Zealand tour. Really? Mm-hmm. What if? What if this is just a cover for some sort of like scandal? I don't he, think it is. Don't. Yeah, because like Parkinson's I mean, Neil really Diamond like is it. wonderful. Yeah. Do you think he like had a secret kangaroo meat hookup or something? No. And they found out, and he's just like, yeah, I can't go. I down think there. people in Australia and New Zealand that love his music wanted to hear him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what I believe. Uh, oh, think- I forgot. Hold on. Going back to when they were still at Universe One, Planet Express. Yeah. Um, when they were all around the table, there's a deleted scene where right after they find out that Lou, uh, Fry and Leela are married, yeah. there's a scene where Fry's like grumbling and he's like, I wish my mom would have bought me the green jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she flipped a coin. Maybe. Well, that was, that was the other thing. Is Neil Diamond still alive in 3003? I'm sure his head is. Yeah. Everybody's head's still alive, I think. Or at least if you're important, your head's alive. So, um, I yeah, don't know. Yeah, I mean, if- they went back and dug up people that had been previously dead in like our, George Washington. around our time. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know if we're past this point, but so when the Zoidbergs are d- bonding in that dumpster, yeah. um, yeah. they they start bitching about the rest of their, cr- their you know, respective crews. I'm a respe- respected medical doctor. <laughs> so, yeah. So- don't look into it, though. <laughs> One of the Zoidberg says, 
what are they from Knob Hill? Yeah, what was that? I don't get this joke. What's and Nob I was Hill? hoping someone could explain it to me because I did not Google it. Uh, I don't know what it's specifically referencing, but I think Knob Hill is a fancy neighborhood in maybe San Francisco. Mm. It's also, uh, uh, you know, mid-shelf uh, bourbon, right? Or That's Knob Creek. Knob Creek. Okay. That Creek, Hill, yeah, whatever. I, I, I don't know. So um, that's when they decide that they're going to steal the box because, you know, fuck them. The rest of the crew, they, they treat Zoidberg so badly. Quit spraying ink on me, Zoidberg. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Put some pants on, Zoidberg. Don't steal our box. <laughs> Not, Knob Hill, once home to the mansions of the big four railroad barons. It's a neighborhood in San Francisco. So that that's all. It's just fan, it's it's a very very just old. like a really dated yeah yeah, yeah. Joke. which which you'd expect from like Zoidbergs yeah. are effectively Borscht Belt comics, so mm-hmm. I'm sure it would have played in, in vaudeville. Yeah, he's a little Judd Hershey with his accent. Oh, he's he's more uh, Jackie Mason esque, right. and and then even deeper, like the Catskills. Yeah, it, it it's uh, I mean it goes deep with him. He's uh. He he's really wonderful in his own failure way. Like the fact that they're both just complete failures is such a, <laughs> it's such a wonderful thing. Where they're just like in the, in the dumpster, eating filth and garbage. I am a successful medical doctor. Um, <laughs> when they what does he say? As they decide to steal the box. And it says something as King Zoidberg caresses their fancy box <laughs> and they're fantasizing about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then, then this is where it goes into, you know, it cuts away back to the crew in general and both professors are there. And I just, I found this so ridiculous. So they're like, after carefully reading the scriptures, we determined that none of us are evil. The Bible, Bible. is the real good news. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they just go on and yeah. leave it. But like, it, it like it's such a pointed uh, nonsensical non sequitur with them. I loved it because normally the professor would just be like, "Ah, well, he was invoking Satan earlier." Really, mm-hmm. actually, mean, he was asking anyone for help. Yeah, he was yeah, just yeah. going down the list. Yeah, he really reached out to the four corners. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Zeus, Buddha, <laughs> God, one of you guys. Satan. And then, then I think this is where I, Blonde Hermes came in. And, yeah, and it's just um, and his Jamaican grandmother. If you want a box <laughs> hurled into the sun, you got to do it yourself. You could probably pay someone to do it. I think that's well, I mean, just that's folk what the, wisdom. The, the, the crew, they were supposed to go do it. They were being paid to do it, and then they didn't. Yeah, not those jokers. Well, so, if, they, if they had left right then, they probably would have gotten it done. I think it's sitting there right. and making them wait until the next morning was the stupid part. So the, the professors hid the the box in what was the... Cru- the Coelacanth tank? Yep, yes. That's the one. And professor, one of them says, uh, "No one but a crazy lobster would look there." Yeah, so they got two. <laughs> check Zoidbergs. It's it's uh, that, it fl- that whole thing with them. I like that it flashes back to them, and they got the uh, they got the uh, the fantasy of being royalty done. Well, and he has mm-hmm. he has the slurm cup on his, his head, head and the toilet paper sash kind mm-hmm. of draped around him. So Zoidberg A is like licking his feet. Oh, like. that was so disturbing. <laughs> so uh. disturbing. And, and just and he's like maybe I can hold the box for a while. The box says no. But it would all hail all hail Zoidberg, the king with the box. Like they're, just, <laughs> the they're so the they're so dumb. And and easily pleased, like I, that's what I think. That's what I love about him. It's like his, like just a piece of pepperoni stuck on a d- empty pizza box. It was the brightest moment of his life. Like if you could set your bar that low, uh, I'd probably be a much happier person. Possibly. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to think about the horrible life I was living, yeah. but but I, you know, I, I've been thinking about that a lot lately. Like contentment, it's all in your head. It's relative to, and I can't. I can't create it. It's Everything's in your head, man. Oh, I know. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's, to that, that's yeah. what Professor Freaksworth says, man. <laughs> from, from Universe 420. 420. <laughs> it's all around. There was a, so there was the part where the two benders were in stereo and they were both yelling. Like I, I enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. Uh, that sounds exactly like this. <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> and it just kept going and going and going, which mm-hmm. I also appreciated. Um, oh, that's the question, the bender question I had. When it was the two benders saying, hey, we're going to go to the strip club. Was he going to go to a robot strip club? Or yeah. does bender like a like <laughs> human women? There are robot strip clubs. Okay. Yeah. 
Because then they, they both hug mm-hmm. and like steal each other's wallets. There is also <laughs> robosexuality, which refers to interhuman and robot relationships. Into uh, it. Gotcha. It's, it's a. <laughs> Into You know what? It's complicated, <laughs> but they're kind of back and forth on it. They haven't been consistent, and it's a little. It seems a li- well. That's that's. It seems a little uh, like total recally to me when they go to that bar and there's all the different species together. Who's going to be attracted to what? It's going to be a real mixed bag. And then what is forbidden? What isn't? Who knows? Well, so I wasn't. That, but everything's but, for sale. I mean, it all works out. And well, you got to sell uh, what they're buying. What so that's is, what you meant when you said you had to meet a ghost. <laughs> 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 I think that is one of my all-time favorite Futurama uh, lines. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What, who says, I wrote down the quote, and in true uh, fashion of my forgetfulness, is it, is it a kind of hairspray? What was the context for that? Oh, shit, I don't have that. Uh, I, I, I remember. I remember it, but I don't remember it, you know what I mean? Um but they so they they basically need to go. They try and create. They create a bunch of other boxes of the parallel universes to go and find their way back to each other. Mm-hmm. R- the two Zordbergs walk in and they say, "The idiots have the box." Yeah. <laughs> I think he's talking about you. Yeah. So they were they were gonna tr- they were going to try to make a box, uh, like redo the box back to their universe, and they couldn't do it. So they were trying over and over again. Then they realized that the Zoidbergs had their box. But they lost it. But mm-hmm. then, yeah, they both <sighs> went into multiple boxes at once, and then all of the boxes fell down on top of the box. So they had to figure out which of the boxes they made. Then they grabbed the wires. They, and they went did like through. a repelling down apparatus. through. Yeah. I mean, that seems. Excuse me. Like kind <laughs> of. A, that seems like kind of a fun exercise. Yeah. I mean, just jumping yeah. in and see, like the, there, that one that the professor so, had. I was going to say, like that. Like, professor, yeah. all women. I'll set that one aside for later. Uh, but <laughs> with Hermes, the box is stuck on my fat head. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then the, 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 sel- the, the, you know, the, the self-awareness of the professor being like, it's the apocalypse, all right. I always thought I'd have a hand oh, in it. Yeah. Like, I just, I love that it's, he's so nonchalant about it. Mm-hmm. So it's like, ah, oh, whatever. But what, so what would have happened if Hermes had actually destroyed the box and thrown it into the sun, I mean, then their universe is gone. They got to stay in universe one. But what if would they, they disappear uh, and die? Though I ooh. think it's it's unknown. But what if they jumped into another box and stayed there when their original box got destroyed? I mean, that's kind that of, they already are in a box. I think your reality, if it is destroyed. And you're somewhere else other than your reality. I think, I think you continue you would, to exist, see, yeah, but your think, reality is gone. See, I think, think you I would, would also be destroyed if you're if if. But like, man, you're not like your own reality, man. You're <laughs> like so, your own like. No, that's the thing. So I, there is a character in Marvel Comics, and maybe there still is. I haven't read one in 25 years, but this is going back to when I did. The guy Kang, mm-hmm. the Conqueror. Like, wasn't that his whole thing is he went to every alternate universe and killed every other version of himself so that he would be, like, I the can't. only Kang? Because it took me about 10 years after I stopped reading comics to understand what it was he was trying to do. I do can you- read, but choose not to, so I don't have any point <laughs> Well, it's, it's picture books, really, right? What, what, what was he trying to do then? He was just going to be the only Kang in the, in the multiverse. Mm. It would be like... I'm not familiar with Kang. He green, pink... Yeah, I'm familiar I, with him. I know of Kang, but I I'm not familiar with his backstory. I know or... Liu Kang from Mortal Kombat, <laughs> yes. or Krang from Teenage from... Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, uh, Splinter! And isn't isn't another uh, isn't it Krang and Kodos, or is it Kang K- and, Kang and Kodos, Kodos on uh, Simpsons, mm-hmm. the Aliens on Treehouse yes. of Horrors? But uh, yeah, just. Uh, you know, he's one of those like D, D team villains from the seventies. There's Kang Kong. <laughs> Kang Kong. There's Dairy Kang. There's, there's Danky <laughs> Kang. Danky <laughs> Kang. Which is that the Jeff- Jeopardy answer? Yeah. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> Which still, yeah. I don't even know the context of that, but I see it and it just makes me laugh so <laughs> much. <Danky laughs> <Kang>. <laughs> Because I bet, I bet that person pronounced it Donkey Kong, mm-hmm. and they're like, <laughs> and Alex Trebek just had to pull a nah, what is nah, <laughs> nah, son, nah, <laughs> nah. It's it, it's just it was so uh, ridiculous, but um, 
<laughs> when they are trying to figure the thing out, he's like, let's all ask each other. That'll solve the problem. <laughs> Which is like 60% of my professional life. It's just, <laughs> just having these the discussions where you're like, I know what I'm going to do regardless of what people say. So we can sit here and talk about it or you can just let me do the work. Mm-hmm. Dummy. I mean, I, but I don't say the dummy part out loud. Just usually. think it. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I say the dummy part out loud. And that's... <laughs> that gets you into trouble. Oh, oh the, the guy I work with. So I listen to my, I, I keep my headphones on all day because I have like um, debt collectors and I all over. And yeah. my, my coworker that sits behind me who like actually does the same job as me, he'll just sit there and he's just those motherfuckers. God, piece of shit. Like I just, <laughs> all I hear all day long is him going, oh, really? Fuckers. Like he just starts wait, 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 like. Wait. Is he talking about your coworkers in the debt collection or is he talking about the people that the debt collectors are talking to? Uh, he talks about things that he's reading on the computer. He's talking about the people that we sit next to. He'll like, re- he'll respond to the, the collectors that sit on the next aisle. Like he'll, he'll like pretend he's on the other end of the phone. Does anyone ever talk to a debt collector? I literally just never answer. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. I mean, I, you'd be surprised. Cause when I was a debt collector, it's, it's like 90% just old people, 10% people who are waiting for a call from someone whose number they don't have. Like not many people answer which is fine. Cause then you just leave a message and then you just spend eight hours of your day like taking the calls of people who are trying to pay you and then just like leaving the same message over and over again. Uh, hello? <laughs> yeah, uh, we're, we're a debt collection service. We're trying to recover a debt. Uh, yeah, sorry, I was waiting on another call. I didn't really... Okay, well, sir, do you have your, uh, do you have your bill in front of you? We're actually, uh, we're just trying to, can you pay a portion of it? Uh, yeah, uh, uh hang on, I gotta, uh, I gotta go. <laughs> I, just, I just got one the other day, and it's it's uh, it's one of those things where every day I get approximately seventy five calls from Elyria, Ohio, and it's all the same mm-hmm. exchange as where I my phone originally came out of. Yeah, I get the same thing, like eight six five, and then whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, shout out to the eight six five. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's three oh nine. What? Uh, I, that's eight six seven. I think. I, know. I don't know. It's, uh, it's don't say numbers around me now because it's not going to stick. But I got one that was from a different city, and I think it's the place that services like my furnace. So I'm like, oh, maybe this is them. Mm. And the girl, like, I picked up and did a hello, and then the girl just launched into, "Hi, this is Katie, and I'm calling back about you were recently uh, looking into tax relief." And I'm just like, click, because no, no, I wasn't looking into tax relief. I've been talking to my accountant about getting my taxes sorted out, but I was not trying to figure out ways to get tax relief because as far as I know, I'm all paid up. I got calls from Katie. student loan, people offering me student loans uh, because I clicked on something on a website one time. Wait, they're offering... They they're, want to give me a student loan. Are you a student? No. I, 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 I'm, Your daughter's like about to graduate serious. from high school. Yeah, yeah, if, if I didn't call her, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a man in my, in my mid to late thirties. I'm, I've, I've learned all there is to learn. I'm not going to, I'm not going to know any more stuff. There'll be no more schooling. I mean, technically, you're at the point where you start forgetting shit. I couldn't Absolutely. remember the episode we watched two days ago. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely coming off the back end now. But yeah, uh, yeah, it's the, it's, it's super fun. The, uh, my, my favorite alternate uh, dimension. Was uh, was twenty five where they had no eyes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have you guys seen any? Uh, we have not seen anything ever. <laughs> ever. <laughs> I mean, I think the most. This is the second time we've seen, or maybe the third time we've seen, like a hippy dippy professor mm-hmm. when they get to Universe four twenty yeah. and it's Professor Freaksworth. But I think Afro Amy was more disturbing than anything else in that whole. I universe. liked Afro Amy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like last, last, uh, well, it would be two weeks now for, for you, uh, for you listeners out there, but maybe uh, even three, we'll in, see in the, yeah, who knows, in the time, <laughs> in the time machine. I just listened to this episode last week and you're talking about which, uh, which episode, which character you'd want to marry. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. Afro Amy might be, might be up there. She's a least, good choice. Yeah. She, she, I was actually fun. thinking the same thing when I was watching the episode. I was like, you know what? I might go, uh, universe one fry. C- uh, really, with the dark hair you and know? the green jacket. What was what was it that sold you on him? The it's green, the green jacket? jacket, man. <laughs> I still I still think that's because Amy's putting him together. He's now he's now married, so he's oh get, Leela. Oh yeah, that's yeah. what did I apologize? Uh, uh, Peg Bundy is putting him oh, together yeah. because, because that's that's how it goes with dudes. A dude left uh, to his own devices will be an absolute maniac. But if you got a 
you got a nice lady to put you in the right yeah. jacket. You know, there's exceptions to everything that make those rules. Um, <laughs> but the, the, the fact that the universe A Hermes is just like, ah, everybody's gone. I don't give a shit. I'm going to go take care of this mission, whatever. And they find their way back, at the, of course, at the last possible right. minute. He <laughs> thinks about it for a yeah, long, long time. Don't time. press that button. <laughs> <laughs> pan down, pan back up, pan back that down. Was, that was a beautiful little bit of, of okay. suspensory there. Okay. Like, because <laughs> like, he, I mean, because I guess, what do you think made him not push the button? Because he was clearly conflicted. Mm-hmm. Was it just that this was my mission, I'm going to do it? Or was it just like, I can be rid of all of you fucking idiots? That's, well, that's thing, what yeah. I was saying earlier, is that like Hermes really doesn't give a shit about the crew. Yeah. <laughs> like, he, he was really about does to not. destroy the box, and that was all. He was like, I'm already here. Yeah. I'm about to push this button. <laughs> this is what I need to do. He had the box destruction checklist. <laughs> <laughs> one box, one sun. It's not his problem that Big they check. got wrapped up into the whole mess that they're in now. Yeah. So yeah, he and, definitely and, thought about whether it'd be easier to just complete his mission and kill everyone, or if uh, that would be its own oh, too see, much paperwork. I, just the peace and quiet. That's probably exactly what it is. He would have had to fill out all the forms, but Hermes lives for filling out forms. That's true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's just it's layers and layers. Head bureaucrat. Yeah, he probably would have gotten promoted for that. It's probably. just like you you put procedure. <laughs> Above human life, mm-hmm. <laughs> that, that, that's a, we're going to promote you two levels for that. Um, and, and they survive, and everything's happy. But Fry asks Leela out to an ape fight. So again, <laughs> want to catch an ape fight? What's the yeah, difference between an ape fight and a celebrity ape fight? I don't think we ever established the difference. Well. Last time we were talking about whether celebrity ape fights, whether they were, it was celebrity versus ape or a celebrity ape. Yes. I think it was a celebrity versus ape and this is ape versus ape. Okay. I, oh, see that celebrity ape, I could. Celebrity ape fight. Or. It depends where the comma is, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. See that that takes us right back to the beginning when we were talking about what celebrities smell like, and you could have like <laughs> pre and post ape fight smells. But then, just imagining like who would you like to see fight an ape? <laughs> that's I mean that's that could be fantastic. Uh, the body of Spiro Agnew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you're you're keeping it in universe. That's fine. All right, I think Spiro would win. Well, I don't think. A head in a jar could fight an ape, and that's most of the no, celebrities I'm t- are heads I mean, in jars. Like, I mean, like current. Day, you talk about currently. I'm talking <laughs> like about today new, we had... new show on FXX. Okay, <laughs> all right. Oh, then, uh, Tom Hardy versus an ape. What kind of ape? Wh- which ape? A gorilla, a chimpanzee, <laughs> a gorilla, an orangutan. I, I say gorilla, like a small oh. one, like a baby gorilla, like a teenager gorilla. Okay, Tom probably be pretty strong. Tom Hardy's pretty strong. Yeah, you ever see Bronson? Mm-hmm. You fuck your shit up. <laughs> I a have not seen it. Person named April that they call Ape for short. An That's ape what I fight. want to see. The ape. ape. Bum, bum, bum. Wait. <laughs> Never mind. No, I know the person you're talking about. We should pro- <coughs> we should probably get her on the show. No, I'm not talking about a person in general. He's just saying ape. Oh, ape. We, we have someone on the spreadsheet who <laughs> that's anyway. Wait, so you want to see that person named April who goes by ape fight another person? A celebrity. What celebrity? Oh, I thought it was just Tom Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was just what we were using. No, no, no. no what celebrity would you like to see fight an ape? Oh, I, I don't know. I'm asking. Think about it. <laughs> Figure it out. Michelle? <sighs> I know. There's so many ways you could go know. with it. I don't know. I don't Celebrities. I don't know. Gary Busey. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Because he's basically an ape. Ver- Give me two. Versus, versus what kind of uh, primate? That one, like, really big gorilla that every zoo has that just, like, sits in the corner and stink eyes all the little kids <laughs> that, like, bang on the glass, and then he, like... Do you, you think know, that would turn into, into like a butt. slap fight? Do you think it would just be like Busey coming up and be like, no. hey, 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 hey. Busey versus the grumpy gorilla? Um, I think Busey could take on a pretty big gorilla. Conor McGregor. Who? 
Conor McGregor. He, he, Isn't he an Ultimate Fighter guy? Yes. Yeah, but he sucks. And I'd want a female mother ape whose baby ape was just taken away from her. So you want you just want to see him get, <laughs> just get uh, his arms ripped off and him beaten with his own arms. <laughs> He's wiry. He'd be real confident and talk a bunch of shit. But yeah, then a mother ape would just rip your. I hate that I have to he bring up like, Harambe. I just want to but... see like. <laughs> <laughs> I oh my god! I put you guys all on the spot, and now I'm tr- I I have to figure out my own celebrity mm-hmm. ape fight. Shit. Um. Oh, see, I'm gonna There's grape ape. I'm gonna no. I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> take this in a different direction. Uh, Bob Barker, known for his animal loving ways. Spay and neuter your pets, kids. Yes. Versus. I don't think he loves animals. He wants them spayed and neutered so he, no more will exist. Well, okay. But Bob. He's trying to wait. control the overpopulation, <laughs> did Tommy. Bob, did Bob Barker die yet? Yes. No. No. Mm, great I don't know. question. I don't know. I don't uh, but think let's so. say let's say Bob Barker versus. A recently castrated chimpanzee who holds Bob Barker responsible <laughs> for his uh, oh. disfigurement. That's uh, that's where I'm going to go with it, and and that's off the top of my head. He is apparently still alive. Oh. I f- yeah, I figured I'd have heard that. Uh, born in 1923. I got my finger on the pulse. So he's I mean, Bob he's Barker. like <laughs> I guess I get Bob Barker uh, Google alerts. He's mm-hmm. like he's like ninety five years old. Wow. Is he older than um, Betty White? Are they like the same age? Probably, probably the same age. They're like twins, 95. actually. Yeah, they're um, fraternal. And for mm. just just because, uh, as I was searching Wikipedia, the front page of Wikipedia today is. Kandali's king of Lydia shows his wife by stealth to Gyges, one of his ministers, as she goes to bed. Uh, that w- I didn't know that they made mm. Wikipedia entries about things like that, but it looks pretty foxy. Mm. If you got it like that, absolutely. I mean, so I, I guess it's the one guy is letting another guy peep at his wife. Is that is like a hot wife thing? I don't know. Is it it's their just, wedding night? Is that one of those like the king gets to prima to fuck your, Yeah, there you go. Prima prima nocta. I thought Mel Gibson made that up. Is that no, a real it's thing? Real. Yeah, no, no, yeah. No. Oh, ick. History's gross. I, how I, I, I'm not. Even, I'm not gonna go there. We'll talk about it off mic. Um. Anyway, I I'm still kind of upset that ape fights are not a thing. I know it's not <laughs> humane. It's just I feel like I feel like if we can let people box and do ultimate fighting, like. They are the apes. Yeah. I mean, if you I think mean, about it. D- definitely primates. There's so mm-hmm. a 7% DNA difference that we're talking about or something, right? Mm-hmm. I just want to see someone rip Conor McGregor's arms off and beat him with it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're getting to the very end of the episode here. And Literally they, the they, very end, yeah. They decided at the at the very last minute to switch boxes. So the professors are pulling each other's boxes and it... Kind of an MC Escher esque. Yeah, situation. thinking about that just like is crazy. I can't even fathom. Yeah. How well, it that puts works. the responsibility for your universe on you rather than your universe being in in the irresponsible hands of you know the other team, which you clearly have seen. There are morons. Mm-hmm. Like they turn the <laughs> box inside out, basically. I just I feel like and it's putting on a shirt inside out, like putting like taking an inside out shirt and putting it on so that it's right side out when it's on you. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I didn't, I thought it was a neat little trick that they did, but it didn't seem like anything weird to me. I just, it's, but just the whole time and space and what they did is crazy. Mm Mm-hmm. They, like, grabbed each other's universe that they each created and, like, hold space time eversion. They call it space time eversion. I don't know if that's a thing. but Yeah. yeah. It's probably not a real thing, or it could be. There's a lot of nerds that worked on this show. (laughs) So then Professor says, well, we got to protect this box. It's our universe. Immediately fried fucking sits on it and and squashes it. (laughs) That was kind of fun, too, where it did, like, the vertical (laughs) squeeze. Yeah, Mm -hmm. the aspect ratio gets squished a bit. I like when Zoidberg gets, they were all going back to their own universes and Zoidberg says, bye, your majesty. Yeah, to the other Zoidberg <laughs> because he got, he became oh. other Zoidberg's bitch. Listen to this, guys. Uh, space-time aversion is in differential topology, sphere aversion is the process of turning a sphere inside out in a three-dimensional space. 
The word aversion means turning inside out. So that's exactly what they did. So it's kind of like when I put on my contacts the wrong way. It's a, it's putting <laughs> on your feet. <laughs> it's, it's. <laughs> then you can see your own brain. <laughs> exactly. It's is putting on an inside out shirt and just like slipping through it so that it's right side up. I do that sometimes too. I do it daily, <laughs> daily. It makes me feel like. It's just, it's, if you can visualize it in three-dimensional space, man, it's, <laughs> I don't know. I, it, like, I've always felt really accomplished uh, physically, not like physically fit, but just like in the realm of physics for being able to be like, oh, yeah, I just, all I got to do is go, and then it's it's on mm-hmm. and it's right. It's, yeah, uh, man. I've Heavy. Been, this made me think a lot, this episode. Is this a like thinking, thinking episode? Is the show usually sillier? Because it's kind of lofty concepts they're dealing with. Uh, it's, sometimes. Yeah, it just depends. Like, Parallel Like dimensions. we were saying before we started, sometimes we just talk about poop a lot. So, it, mm. And that's maybe germane to the conversation of the show. It might just be a, a lackluster yeah, like, episode. Yeah, like what, the last episode that uh, we recorded that's coming out? Um, tomorrow? Tomorrow. No, we have... No, two. tomorrow... <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, one of the episode. It's the episode that's coming out the week we're recording right now. Whatever. Uh, Bender became a female to compete in the Olympics, and like that was the in the robot Olympics. Y- no, just the Earth Olympics. All right, fair. <laughs> and we'll make you reca- recap your views. It, we did it, you know, several years prior to the Bruce to Caitlyn Jenner transformation. It's a pretty. A lot of things on this show end up being pretty, you know, uh, premonitory. Is My friend is going to the uh, the Seoul Olympics. He's working at something something with a microphone. I imagine that <laughs> means that it's going to be in South Korea. But I think if it was S O U L Olympics, it would be way fucking cooler and something I'd spend. <laughs> but like, I'd take time off work to watch and possibly travel to and see. I that miss, would be that would be way cooler. Like best Soul horn train. section. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you have like a like a wah wah off. Man. <laughs> who, who can play like a four on the four four beat in the pocket the longest, <laughs> like in, like endurance drumming. The Soul Olympics. <sighs> the Soul best, Olympics. Best hat. <laughs> Fun- funkiest feet. <laughs> how yeah. deep your how deep your voice can get in the microphone. <laughs> yeah, it still get picked up and like and project. Like, god damn it, it's another million dollar idea that we've screwed up. Here we go. Oh. Oh yeah. Gold medal at the Soul Olympics. Come on, baby. Come on. <laughs> that's, that's literally exactly what I was imagining. <laughs> we've we've made it reality. Yeah, baby. <laughs> That's like that's two clicks off from just like regular Bootsy Collins talk, mm-hmm. I, which, God. which I would do a Bootsy podcast if you guys want to, you know, branch out. Uh, <laughs> I'm surprised there isn't a Bootsy podcast to begin with. I'm surprised he doesn't have his own podcast. Yeah, I could listen to him just talk about everything. Or baby. does he? You know what? He posts pretty frequently on Facebook. Yeah, and he'll post like uh, Bootsy's girls, which is like young girls who do cool stuff and like. It's cool. Is like, it like is it like dirty cool stuff or is it just like here's a really it's accomplished? Like, it's like thing. gymnasts and and young academics and no shit. Yeah, I love Bootsy Collins. He's so cool. And he lives in like Cincinnati. Like, because uh, you know, I don't want to disparage that city. There's some things that have come out of it that are great, but I've never had a great time there. But can you imagine just walking around downtown Cincinnati and there's like Bootsy just walking. Think you know going into CVS, <laughs> but like in full Bootsy regalia, that would just that would be the best thing ever. Like here, you basically you're lucky if you get like Sax Man or maybe run into Dick Goddard and his sibling S somewhere. But like, I see you, the weatherman <clears throat> Andre Bernier from time to time doing what? Uh, like uh, going out to eat. See, I he always strikes me as like a false Frenchman, and that rubbed me the wrong way for years. <laughs> Well, he's always eating pate and croissant. So I bet, <laughs> I bet, just to keep up the ruse. <laughs> he's wearing a beret and smoking a cigarette out of, out of, out of an extender. <laughs> he, has a, he has a fake pointy mustache he puts on when he goes out. It always <laughs> seems like a very nice man. And all know. he'll say is robble, robble. And that's, <laughs> that's something we know to be true. Um, I guess we, we made it to the end. I mean, there was some digression, but it wasn't too bad. This is, it's think. a great episode. It's one of those episodes where it's just really 
this could turn into the Chris Farley show and we could just be like, hey, remember this part? Yeah, remember it, that part? And it was really Because that's good. really it is. And it's like, I mean, it's just a bunch of lines back and forth with it was a the joke main machine. cast. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, and it was very tight. I mean, there wasn't a lot of like extraneous stuff. Were there any other deleted episodes besides, or deleted scenes besides yeah, that one? Yeah, but nothing that really, like just like there was like a little extended um line that Leela had before Fry said shut up sir or whatever in the beginning no. <laughs> and then there was something when Amy and uh, when Amy and Amy were, Amy painting, and their Amy were painting their toenails and she said something about you Bly you are evil and shallow and then she said something I'm not else, evil like I don't remember what I, she said like I think she did one. like a spla or something. It the was two, like, yeah. yeah. The two Amy's were sitting next to each other painting. They were in opposite colored uh, jumpsuits and they were painting their nails the opposite color. Yes. And the the universe one Amy said, it's good to have an imaginary friend. She's like, I'm parallel. I'm not imaginary. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but then, yeah, when she was painting her nails pink or not pink, she was like, yeah, you're, I heard you. I knew you were evil and shallow. She's like, I'm not evil. I'm not evil. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that, that she yeah. is in fact shallow. Yeah. And and I think she owns that. She's she's uh she's a fickle lady. But it, but all in all, it's um I, I feel like the last few episodes have been kind of anyway. And this one was a nice so, like a nice, palate cleanser. Yeah. We're finishing strong on the rest of the season, aren't we? Until mm-hmm. we get to your most hated episode ever, Tom. Mm-hmm. We have what three episodes left for season four. I think yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. It's, we're we're rapidly approaching the end. Um, so, with all of that being said, um, you brought some extra equipment with you. Oh, this, I got some uh, extracurricular activities. Yeah, the uh, yeah the the thing I do it's a special treat. <laughs> the looping project I do is called Two Muffin Rabbit. It's what does a, that mean? It's a reference uh, to uh, an Alfred Hitchcock movie, uh, one of his comedies, uh, The Trouble with Harry. The one with. Um, Little Jerry Mathers in it. That's the one, and a, and, a and Shirley MacLaine. Oh, she's really cute in that movie. <laughs> Super cute with like this little pixie cut and and yeah. uh, uh, like that red hair and just devastating blue eyes. But yeah, uh, a young Jerry Mathers is holding a, a dead rabbit by its feet. Some because this is a, a neighborhood where that can happen apparently. Right. And uh, Shirley MacLaine is trying to get it away from him, so she trades him a muffin for a rabbit. And he trades. He's like, oh, it's a good trade. He trades it over without even thinking. Uh, but he takes a second and he walks back and says. I think that was a two muffin rabbit, <laughs> <laughs> and that always that always struck me. And uh, sure enough, it was available. Uh, the email was available. The Facebook was available. The <laughs> Instagram was available, as was the Twitter. So, uh, as I've learned from thirty years of being in bands and doing this podcast, <laughs> that's half the battle right there. Yeah, I was like two muffin rabbit. That's not a thing yet. I can just take that. And that's oh, I I remember that. It's a, I mean, it is a pretty silly Hitchcock movie. It's just been a long time what, since what I saw. What movie is it? I missed. The, the Trouble with Harry. Okay. It, it's one of his it's one of his comedies. They it's find kind a, of a farce. There's a dead body. Yeah, they find a dead body and they uh and no one wants to admit that they found a dead body, apparently. I don't remember how yeah. Oh, the there was a there was some there was some gunplay because they were hunting and they thought they killed this guy. Uh so they were just gonna bury him. Uh but then people keep happening upon them and one thing leads to another. It's a real they I think they bury the body and have to like come back and unbury it. It's a real uh, you know, how do you do? But it's a uh, uh, turns good out, one. uh, good old Hitch had a pretty fucked up sense of humor. Oh. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's oh, so that's good. Yeah. So what we is this two yeah. muffin rabbit business? Two muffin rabbit. I have a I have a looping pedal. I didn't bring everything with me, but there's a, I got one channel I can I can loop on. And actually, uh, I was writing I was writing you guys a song. Uh, and uh, so I'm just gonna like uh, I'm gonna go. Is it th- dirty? Um. Yeah, it's it's in a good way. It says all right. It's a, a there's a swear word in it. I say, uh, okay. I say fucking I say fucking a lot in it. Enough well, anyway. So, we say fucking a lot on this show. For episode 69. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Episode 69. <laughs> Over here I'll lay down the uh lay down the uh, some of this. Tell me if it's too hot. <laughs> I recorded this when we got here. And now just lay this. Oh, top, top, It's time. It's time. Oh, 
the fucking slurm cast. From motherfucking slurm cast. From motherfucking slurm cast. From motherfucking slurm cast. And then that'll go into in terminal. Two Muffin Rabbit on all the social media platforms. I feel like you just took the name of our show and put swears with it. I mean, there's a pot. You know, I was. I, I had uh, I had messaged. Uh, I'm sorry. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Full dis- hey, do you guys always do the show in here? Bas- Have you ever basically. considered doing it in a cave? Welcome Whoa. to Slurmcast in a cave, everybody. We repel down from. Well, we we did that once. You did one cave episode, and we got bit by bats, and they had rabies. You do got to be careful. The guano was, was very it, slippery. Yeah, <laughs> but was, for some reason, I'm the only one that got treatment for it. <laughs> I, well, I like I like when my mouth gets foamy. We did lose power one time, and we recorded half an episode on an iPhone. So, you guys have been through some shit. No, yeah, because Michelle is the only one I know before I got here, and uh, I had messengers messaged her earlier. I was like, "Hey, what are the other guys' names on the show? I'm trying to work it into a song." <laughs> well, you listened to an episode. I, I sent you an yeah, episode. But, like, to I, can't be res- to. I can't be responsible for learning everything. I just yeah, gotta, so I need you to tell me. You messaged me while I was at the Sprint store getting my new iPhone. Yeah, you were the, we were, we were the in the ten. A I got the, the communications 10. gap for a moment. Yeah, and then I got the new phone and had zero notifications, and then apparently I hadn't like opened up Messenger yet, and I oh, no. had to do so to see your message. Hanging out with Pete. Pete, 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 Pete. Uh, 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 Hanging out with Michelle. Michelle, 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 Michelle. I was I was going somewhere like that with it, uh, but I couldn't get everyone's name in time, and uh, I was gonna make it rhyme with a, with another word. Songwriting's hard, you guys. It's 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 difficult, which is why I don't have any good ones. Uh, most of my favorite people people are like, oh, I really like that one. I was like, thanks, it's a cover. I, uh, yeah. That's a, Gordon Lightfoot. I do a really good Gordon Lightfoot. I do an, uh, an excellent uh, James Taylor number, uh, Sublime covering somebody else. It's a uh, Another oh. one I lean on. Oh so, dear! So Quite we're... entertaining. Oh yeah, that's, that's a that's a couple of layers of of a bean dip I don't want to get into. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the other thing. It's not uh, not really for. <laughs> I don't want to say not for anybody, but it's certainly not for everybody. <laughs> uh, no, well, neither is this show. Uh, Perfect. And, and and every week the numbers show it's for less and less and less. <laughs> so even better. Uh, I guess that's. That's it, right? We've got our our new song. Uh, we've gone through the episode. Do we have any um, unfinished business? Uh, or are we ready to wrap up episode sixty nine? No, I think. Favorite hip hop noise. <laughs> <laughs> mine, mine is the the open hi hat that goes ding. I like that one. Or the like monkey sound. There's like a monkey the, sound. Like it's like oh, I can't remember how it goes. It's like on a keyboard. Like you sometimes you can. It's like a standard. We could use that to yeah. do like theater of the mind ape fights. Like, Shit, yeah. let's go find it. Uh, so thank you for coming on the show, Scott. Thanks for having go me. Go look up Two Muffin Rabbit. Uh, go watch The Trouble with Harry, for that matter. I mean, yeah, like, it's all we're going to do. It Go deep. Give Hitchcock a bump. Yeah. <laughs> His estate could he use some it. cash. They've got a lot of posthumous harassment claims to take care of. Um, we can be reached at slurmcast.com, where all of our episodes are, including links to our uh, T-shirt shop on Tee Public. And if you go and look at the wonderfully curated selection of Futurama and other style shirts that we have there. We'll get a little cut if you purchase something. Yes. Uh, we're on Facebook. We're on Twitter and Instagram at SlurmCastPod. You can email us at SlurmCastPod at gmail.com. You can call us, text us, send us uh, pictures via text to message at 216-438-1077. Uh, 
rate and review on iTunes, please. Mm. Anything else? There was something, but now I can't remember. So now you guys got to wait till next week. Yeah, Tom. Uh-oh. Tom's a little forgetful tonight. <laughs> <laughs> he smelled up showing <laughs> real <laughs> forgetful. <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> have a great week, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.